The National Plan for Maritime Environmental Emergencies is a cooperative arrangement uh, and it relies on collaboration with all jurisdictions to deliver responses to emergencies in the marine environment. Uh, this capability allows us to go to sea and uh, assess a, a hazardous situation. Uh, previously, the only option really available to us was to bring the vessel into a port, uh, remove the suspect item and examine it uh, shoreside. So now we'll actually be able to go out, undertake a comprehensive assessment of what's happening, uh, design a response on shore before we bring the vessel in. This particular capability is a national capability and they'll be able to access by our national plan partners. So even though we're building it with a New South Wales jurisdiction, uh, other jurisdictions will be able to call on it if they require it. Because it's a relatively low frequency event, it was considered most appropriate that we look for people who, who respond to chemicals on a regular basis. Uh, the partnership with uh, Fire and Rescue New South Wales uh, is a valuable one to us at AMSA uh, because they're very busy uh, responding in Sydney, uh, particularly around the ports, and officers attended this course from Alexandria Station, uh, primarily respond to the ports. Uh, so there's a value uh, to them from, providing the, from receiving the training in the maritime industry and there's a va value to us. Of course there's a number of challenges faced uh, by land-based operators uh, that uh, they don't normally train for uh, in the maritime environment. So this course uh, has been quite valuable for them. We've covered through, uh, we've gone through maritime industry, we've introduced them to how the system works, uh, containerization. Uh, the commercial pressures that the uh, ship's master may be under, uh, the conditions he might find, they might find on board, crewing uh, resources from around the world. Uh, we've also looked at uh, helping them to survive at sea uh, if they, in the unfortunate event that they attend a vessel um, and need to evacuate. We've trained them in sea survival, evacuation, life rafts, uh, survival suits. Uh, and finally, we've uh, practiced on a live uh, on the vessel, the Stephen Brown, uh, actual boarding of a vessel from a pilot boat uh, and climbing up uh, pilot ladders. And uh, then once on board, accessing confined spaces and working through holes that are peculiar to shipping that perhaps uh, they don't encounter in their normal business. My overall favourite bit um, probably would have been the sea rescue exercise where we um, spent some time in the survival centre because it gave us an appreciation of the extent that things can get to if things do go wrong. So it, for me, it instilled in my mind the necessity for a recon team to be able to refine these incidents to a point where if, if a vessel does have to come into port, it can be dealt with quite well. So um, that, that really drove it home. Having that experience, knowing that that's, that's potentially one of the worst case scenarios was good. You know, um, backup is a long way away when you're at sea. Um, so, you know, there has to be a lot of thinking on feet and there has to be good systems and procedures in place too on behalf of both, you know, AMSA, Fire and Rescue, and also the vessel in question. Yeah, look, the pool really gives them some really good exposure when things go bad on board and they have to vacate the ship because they will be at sea. Um, so the exposure that we teach mariners that the best thing is to stay with the ship as long as possible, and I think the guys could see why that would be the case. Something else we've learnt from this is the amount of pressure and emphasis that the, uh, the captain or the master um, is under in his decision making. And that, that's something that we really didn't appreciate or understand before. So um, it's given us greater scope to see things from, um, from the captain's perspective. If a ship in a seaway and you've got boxes on deck that are in, in a hazard situation, mm. you're going to miss the ship, let them go. Mm. Open your twist locks, tell the master to come broadside onto the swell, and you watch those boxes go over the side. They'll go over the side pretty quickly. Well, we had to take into consideration that they've already got their, their own area of expertise. What we offer is the maritime exposure. So we had to bring that together. But we were dealing with non-mariners. They, they knew shipping as such, but uh, actually the internal workings, you know, how a ship's put together and, and the uh, operational side of things was probably a little bit um, unknown to them. So we had to bring that together. So uh, that was a, a fairly big task because we typically train mariners. Well, from a land-based perspective, when you look at it, a, a building doesn't move, basically, unless it's coming down. Well, the ships are constantly on the move. Whether it's stationary or not, it's still moving in the water. So there's always that to consider. If there's an incident on board, there's the shifting of cargoes, whether they're um, the container cargoes or uh, solid or liquid cargoes on board, they can be constantly moving. So the guys have got to take that into consideration. It's in a different work environment. So navigating their way around, finding their way around the ship in a lot tighter areas, a lot condensed areas, because the ship's basically to carry cargo. So people have thought off second. So um, everything's condensed into a tighter area. Our primary objective uh, for the training was to encourage the participants to act as a team. Uh, so we brought to Launceston uh, an experienced maritime casualty officer to work with the team and encourage them conversations about risk and how the things might be approached. So 
before decisions were made to board uh, the vessel, the conversation was held regarding the sea states, the condition of the vessel. Uh, once on board, uh, the maritime casualty officer consulted with the master around the details of the incident before the teams, the, the reconnaissance teams or the techni technical reconnaissance teams were dispatched into the vessel to access it through the various accident points, hold, ladders, things like that. Also, it undertook a large amount of uh, training on board the vessel uh, from uh, fall arrest. Uh, the size of the vessels that we're looking at are, are quite large uh, and ladders can often be you know, in excess of 20 metres. Uh, so working through those spaces, which uh, uh, they don't normally do. Keep in mind too that like most jobs you would go to take it sort of outside the maritime industry, you can ask for things to be shut down and shut down. So if you want the power, when the power is gone basically. On a ship and that, that may not be the case. You might ask for things to be isolated, but because the skipper still wants some manoeuvrability, still wants his engines capable, everything might not be shut down as you would expect it to be. So just stuff you need to check about when you're moving into areas, what's in there? The guys have been exposed to a whole range of um, resources that AMC has available to it, um, yeah, from the uh, classroom based materials through to the ship simulator today, they finished off of that today so they had a good look around that. Uh, they were on the Stephen Brown which is a static, static floating workshop type vessel so they were able to get on that which is still replicates a, a ship. So they've, um, they've had a full range to nearly a full suite of, of facilities. I think the, the real benefit uh, of working with AMC Search has been that they provide the total package. Uh, they've got the classroom facilities, their staff uh, incredibly well qualified uh, and, and very knowledgeable in the maritime environment. Uh, they have all the facilities including Sea Survival Centre uh, which allows us to simulate uh, you know, a real life evacuation from a ship at night uh, which is uh, I think everyone found incredibly uh, challenging and, and rewarding at the same time. And they also have the vessels uh, Stephen Brown, Skipjack which we can use to simulate uh, boarding in a, in, a, in a real maritime environment. I'm going to go back to my station and say it was, it was great training. It was um, something that will help me as an operational firefighter especially who, who is stationed quite near the major port of Sydney. Uh, it's going to help me no end and I can pass that information on to my fellow members before they get the training so you know, I am an asset to my crew now. It proved it over this week uh, in particular with the, uh, the practical scenarios uh, that we are uh, getting a better understanding of one another and how we work and how different the agencies work but how putting them side by side we, c we can achieve the, uh, the ultimate outcomes for a great result and uh, yeah this, this whole week has uh, been able to prove that we, we, ca we can work side by side. Look overall it's been a wonderful week, it's been a valuable learning experience, I mean if it's, it's benefited uh, my career, it, it's sharpened my skills as a hazmat tech, I'm going to take a lot away from this as a person and uh, I'm very grateful to AMSA and Fire and Rescue New South Wales for giving me this opportunity. Yeah, this week I've been really impressed with the Fire Rescue New South Wales personnel and their enthusiasm for the task at hand. Uh, they've accepted every challenge that was given to them uh, and they've done it in good spirits. They've worked hard to refine their own uh, capabilities and many of the firefighters have told me the benefit of them for the course in their everyday work when they attend ports and things like that is going to be really, really helpful.